have always been fascinated with food from around the world. It is such an underrated way of learning about culture, world history, and heritage. For instance, are people eating from large shared dishes or smaller individual ones? What does this say about a culture? And what kinds of foods are people eating? Is it fresh, preserved, local, from abroad? And what does this say about trade and a society's role within world history? There is so much to learn from sharing a meal and trying something new, and I'm here to do just that. On today's episode, we are going to be exploring the food and culture of a place that is in one of the most fascinating and ancient regions of the world. Located at the crossroads of Central Asia and the Middle East, and often referred to as the heart of Asia, we are going to be exploring Afghan food. Today we're here in Harrow in Northwest London and we're visiting Balk Restaurant. I hear it serves some of the best Afghan food around, which happens to be one of my favorite cuisines. So I'm really, really excited to try some of the food and to learn a little bit more about Afghan culture. Today I'm meeting with Umaid, who helps manage Balk Restaurant. Tucked away near Kenton Underground Station in Northwest London, we were immediately greeted like family by everyone there, who showed us around their beautifully decorated dining area and function room in the back. Yasser, the restaurant manager, gives me a quick overview of the food they prepared for us today before we sit down to eat. Um, we have our Greek salad uh, with a fresh feta cheese and Greek olives. We also have a fatouche salad with a crispy bread uh, with a pomegranate juice, uh, sumac and extra virgin olive oil. We move into the mixed starter platter that we have. It has a variety of different starters, so you got some hummus, you got some shiraz, uh, you got some fried aubergine. We do also fresh falafel. Our main course, uh, this is one of our famous and best sellers platters that we have. It has all the variety of uh, meat, which has lamb, uh, it has chicken, it has the kofta skewers. Uh, also our uh, best uh, famous dish, the traditional dish that we have is the rice with lamb shank. Uh, so we cook the rice inside the lamb shank and then we steam them together. It also has the sweet flavor to it, to the sweet raisins and carrots in there. Uh, our traditional uh, drink, which is a yogurt drink with a dry mint and cucumber. If we also move into the uh, side dishes that we have is the mantu. This is the Afghani traditional dish with the dumplings and it has minced kofta inside, has onions and black pepper. Also have the homemade yogurt on top with a dry mint. We also have the fried aubergine with a fresh tomato sauce, with a yogurt on top, with a dry mint. Bismillah. Mm, that's really, really good. I don't know why mantu is just, it's so comforting. Yeah. I'm not Afghan, but it tastes like something like, like a mom would make. Especially with the lentils on top, it gives mm -hmm. it a nice kick as well. Really good. I was so surprised to know that Afghanistan has dumplings. I mean, when you think of dumplings, I think of like my own culture or East Asia. We've, uh, these ones are homemade, especially with the ashak. Okay. Um, many people like the mantu. I prefer the mantu myself as well. It's quite nice. I like it. What is the main difference between the ashak and the mantu? Uh, this one's got some kofta in it. It's uh, mainly with meat and that is for vegetarians. Um, okay. It's got some leeks, some onions and some parsley in it. Yeah. Okay, well, I think we should try the ashak. ashak. No in Afghanistan, there's a big debate for mantu and ashak. Is there? Yeah. So like... Does that it's a personal choice, yeah. Which one is more popular? Uh, I would say mantu because uh, people from our country, we like meat. We have a lot of meat. Oh, okay, so yeah. mantu is more popular. Mm. That's really good. Yeah, this is the mutabel. Uh, this is the cold uh, version of the Barani Afghani, oh, okay, which so we have here. Okay, so it's with the... Yeah. Uh, it's aubergine? Aubergine with some yogurt, yeah. Okay. Us Afghans, we don't use cutlery most of the times. We have it with our hands. Oh, you just use yeah. your hands? Even for uh, oh. mantu? Man mantu, no. S some people, they put it in the bread with uh, another dish and oh, they have it. Oh, that sounds yeah. really good. And then also, speaking of yogurt, is this also uh, made from yeah. yogurt? This is a yogurt mixed with the milk, some salt and some mint. It's called do in our language. Do? Do, yeah. This is like a yogurt, yogurt drink. drink yeah. And then this is mint on it's top, It's mint right? on top, dry mint on top. Okay. Mmm, that's so nice. Yeah, it's uh, refreshing. Um, 
Many oh, people have it so at night time as well. Uh, it makes you go sleep quicker as well. Really? Yeah, so some people have it at night time. It, it, it makes them go sleep. It's so it's like sour but really a bit really sour, good. Yeah. 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 I really like that. I could just have that as a meal. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is the main uh, main, the main dish. dish. Uh, this mm -hmm. is the Kabli Palau. Uh, we make it Uzbek style. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's okay. got the lamb shank in there as well. We've got some variations of kebab as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'll Thank give you, you some rice. It's a bit messy. There you go. Thank you. you want, this is the bara kebab. It's mm -hmm. the traditional lamb tikka. Okay. It's quite nice. It's very popular as well. Thank you. No worries. The meat for this is red meat. So it's uh, very nice and rich in flavor. Mm -hmm. I've got some chicken breast as well. We call it the chicken shisha. It's quite popular mm -hmm. as well. Thank you so much okay. food. There you go. We do big, big portions for everything. Do you guys eat like this every single night? Yeah, we do. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Afghan people, they're not uh, uh, stingy with their portions. We <laughs> keep big, big portions. This is so amazing. I think this is like the best lamb I've ever had. Mm. This is so soft. It's like, I wasn't even chewing. I just chewing like, just <laughs> What are some things that you think makes Afghan food very unique or special? Our food is all natural. If you see other cuisines, they have, um, they put spices into it and mm -hmm. make it, it doesn't come out nice. Our one, we just make it naturally. Um, we make it the correct way as well. We don't have different ways of it. Then it all comes out nice. So it's like, you're just letting the natural flavors the natural come flavors out. Come Even in. this like lamb yeah. shake, it's not like too much spice. Too much, yeah. It just tastes really good. Yeah, around. you can taste it. And most of the other restaurants as well, they, they make it the same way as well. Uh, now we have the Afghan dessert called the shiria. Okay. Uh, shir means uh, milk and yakh means ice. Um, it's made from some uh, condensed milk, milk, sugar. And then on the top, we have um, some pistachio and almonds. Uh, we also have a, a type of a sauce, it's called K-Mark. It's homemade and traditional. Mm -hmm. We put it on top and then it, it makes a nice flavor. So it becomes soft uh, to the touch. Mm -hmm. So when you put it in your mouth, all the flavors expand. Mm. That's so good. Very it's nice. really yeah. sweet, but not like, it's like that fresh icy. Fresh, yeah. That's really good. So this restaurant is called Balk Restaurant. Yeah. So is your family from Balk? Uh, my family is originally from Samangan, mm -hmm. uh, but we live in uh, Balk and okay. we live in Jalalabad as well. Okay. Uh, but Balk is um, a, a famous town in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. It's uh, 20, ma uh, 20 kilometers um, northwest from Mazar Sharif, which is a famous okay. city. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, and Balk, uh, the town we do, uh, they have big street food, so they do big portions of street food, so we replicated it here as well oh, really? so we do big big portions for everything well, is there is there something unique or special about um, we are very uh, the people there are very loyal to each other mm -hmm. so um, we have a big hospitality area there as well uh, people they if there's anyone in need or anyone needs something we always help each other out so everyone Sorry. trusts each other there's there's no crime or nothing like that we, we all have uh, three things which we believe in in loyalty hospitality and modesty so we all stand by, uh, stand with that, and we look after our families. And yeah, I'm happy with that. Mm -hmm. Those are three really beautiful things to be proud of, yeah. part of a culture. Um, also, like I think now, when a lot of people think of Afghanistan, they'll yeah. think about political issues or yeah. war or invasion. But if if you could explain you know, who the Afghan people are to someone who's an outsider, what would um, you say? To be honest, uh, apart from the news and everything, obviously the news will show us conflict. But other than that, there's good stuff happening in Afghanistan. Uh, there's many people who've, who have made a good amount of money for themselves uh, outside coming back to Afghanistan, mm -hmm. making schools, making charities, uh, building restaurants and stuff to help out the local community. L like I said, we're all with loyalty. We look after each other. We help each other. Um, it's not how it seems or portrays in the mm -hmm. news, mm -hmm. but we all loving, caring. That's, that's the best we can do. Mashallah. Afghan food will always be one of my favorites, but what made it so special today was just being able to speak to Omid and to learn more about the culture and heritage of Afghanistan from his point of view and experience. I was reminded that respecting and simply having a genuine curiosity about our different cultures is essential in understanding that we do have a shared humanity and that we're a lot more similar than we are different. For those of you who watched until the end, thank you so much. 
While making a video like this, I was hoping to do two things. Firstly, to highlight Afghanistan's incredible heritage, culture, and people. But secondly, I'm also hoping that this video stands as a reminder to pay attention to what is currently happening in Afghanistan in regard to its humanitarian crisis. Islamic Relief is one of those organizations working tirelessly within the ongoing humanitarian crisis in Afghanistan. They are on the ground in the country, providing food to families in risk of malnutrition and famine. As we speak, many have called Afghanistan the worst humanitarian crisis on earth, with 22 million people in the country facing acute famine. If you're looking for a way to make any kind of contribution to help those most in need, do take the time to see what Islamic Relief is doing with their work in Afghanistan. We're adding in the link to Islamic Relief below, so do check them out if you can. I hope that regardless of how you choose to act, we can all hope and pray for a future where all Afghans can live with dignity and peace in their beautiful country.